Hello students, today in this video we are going to discuss the chemical properties of the organic compounds. As we have already learned that organic compounds are the compounds containing carbon and hydrogen. Along with that sometimes they may also have oxygen, they may have sulfur and nitrogen in them. So here we are going to talk about the type of reactions given by the organic compound. The four important types which are in your syllabus in the 10th standard. The first type is combustion, second is oxidation, addition and substitution reaction. So one by one we will be talking about each of them. Let us see. Let us start with the combustion reaction. This is a special reaction called combustion reaction in which carbon and all the allotropic form of the carbon that is it might be graphite, it might be fullerene, it might be coke, it might be coal or anything else. The carbon and all its allotropic form when they will be burnt in the presence of oxygen they will give out carbon dioxide on complete combustion that is if they will burn completely with the huge amount of oxygen in them they will burn to give out carbon dioxide and this reaction is so special that it gives out a huge amount of energy also this energy which is evolved during the reaction is in the form of heat and light on the other hand side not only carbon the carbon and its other compounds like hydrocarbons here i am taking methane what it is called as methane this will also burn in the air or oxygen to give out carbon dioxide and this hydrogen content will make water along with the formation of huge amount of energy not this also other kind of compounds like alcohol c2h5oh this will also burn in the presence of oxygen to give out carbon dioxide to give out water along with a lot of energy so in nutshell what i can say is carbon all kind of its compounds if they will burn in the presence of air they will be giving out carbon dioxide water and huge amount of energy and this is the reason that most of the fuels which we are using for the purpose of getting energy in various ways these fuels are having carbon in them that is we have coal we have coke we have uh, fuels like apg lpg we have fuels like natural gas all these compounds are having carbon in them because they give out exothermic reaction when they come in contact with the air with the little ignition in them this is called combustion apart from that we have another concept in the combustion and that is called incomplete combustion in incomplete combustion, carbon react with the oxygen again, but here this oxygen is in limited supply. This oxygen and carbon combines this time to form carbon monoxide along with some amount of carbon dioxide and some amount of carbon particle. These carbon particles are known as carbon black and they are the actually unburnt carbon particle. What does mean, what do you mean by the umber particle is that is these carbon particle are not, neither they are converted into the carbon monoxide nor they are converted into the carbon dioxide and along with the formation of some amount of energy. Actually the energy formed during this particular incomplete combustion is little less than the energy which is produced during the complete combustion of the carbon and its compounds. So this particular reaction involves less amount of heat. This particular reaction involves more amount of heat. On the other hand side, this reaction gives out only carbon dioxide and this reaction gives out carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and carbon black. This carbon monoxide is considered to be as a poisonous gas. It is more harmful than the carbon dioxide which is responsible for the global warming. But this particular gas is very poisonous in nature just because it attaches itself with the hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin. This compound called carboxyhemoglobin is very harmful for the body just because it decreases the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. And that is why this is more harmful than the carbon dioxide. So this is about combustion complete combustion and incomplete combustion. So let us talk about one more part of this reaction and that is how we can confirm that the given compound is saturated or unsaturated by 
burning that compound so we have two kind of compounds basically to have uh, we have two kind of hydrocarbons basically unsaturated and saturated so unsaturated hydrocarbons burns with the yellow and sooty flame whereas the saturated hydrocarbons burn with clean flame so this yellow flame or sooty flame this soot is actually the carbon particles and yellow flame is because of the particles which are burning in the flame so this yellow and sooty flame is the characteristic property of the unsaturated hydrocarbons on the other hand side saturated hydrocarbon gives the blue colored clean flame so this could be a test for the confirmation of the saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon but you have to be conscious while doing this test just because sometimes these saturated hydrocarbons also burns with the set sooty flame the reason is very simple actually what happens is whenever there is limited supply of oxygen if this oxygen is in less amount this these saturated hydrocarbon do not get proper amount of oxygen to form the carbon dioxide and that is why rather than forming this carbon dioxide desaturated hydrocarbon undergo incomplete combustion and this can incomplete combustion gives out carbon monoxide with the carbon particles and this leads to the sooty flame so you just take care whenever you are doing an experiment for the confirmation of unsaturated and saturated hydrocarbon judge the things according to the flame but make sure that you are giving a proper supply of oxygen to the compound so let us start with the next reaction called oxidation reaction this oxidation reaction is very important and definitely you will be getting some questions from this chapter from this particular reaction so let us start with the oxidation reaction two very important oxidizing agents which are used for the oxidation reactions are alkaline KMnO4 and acidified K2Cr2O7 now these two compounds these two compounds are known as oxidizing agents because these two compounds add the oxygen they provide the oxygen to the reaction so that they will be converted into the oxidized products this is alkaline KMnO4 which is also known as potassium permanganate this is acidified K2Cr2O7 which is known as potassium dichromate this potassium permanganate can also be written down as KMnO4 slash OH this OH is actually showing the presence of basic medium on the other hand side acidified can be shown like K2Cr2O7 slash H plus ion so basically this H plus ion and OH plus ion are showing this acidified and the alkaline KMnO4 solutions let us see the reactions the important reactions of oxidation the first reaction is oxidation of ethene in the presence of oxidizing agents that is alkaline KMnO4 this will give you CH2 CH2 OH so this is called oxidation of ethene into ethylene glycol here you can see one oxygen is added to the ethene so this is called oxidation reaction one another example of the oxidation reaction is the oxidation of ethanol which is again very important for the purpose of examination and this is CH3 CH2 OH in the presence of alkaline KMnO4 or K2Cr2 O7 which is acidified I am adding oxygen here because this oxygen here is provided by these alkaline KMnO4 or acidified K2Cr2O7 this oxygen which I have kept in the square bracket means this oxygen is the nascent oxygen what it is called as NaScent nascent oxygen this nascent oxygen is provided by these KMnO4 and K2Cr2O7 which will oxidize the alcohol into a, another product called acetic acid 
So this, this particular reaction is very important for the examination purpose that is the alcohol will be oxidized into acid with the help of oxidizing agent called alkaline KMnO4 or acidified K2Cr2O7. Okay students, let's start with another reaction called substitution reaction. Actually this reaction is very simple and very important also. This reaction, I'll start with this reaction by taking a very simple example of the simplest alkane. All of us know this alkane and this is methane. If I want to add chlorine atom to this alkane, is it possible for me to add the chlorine to it? Obviously not, just because this carbon which is attached to the four other car, hydrogen atom is completely satisfied and if I want to add something, anything to it, it is not possible for me. So, this will not undergo the addition reaction. What I can do is, I can remove this hydrogen and then I can add this chlorine to it and that is what, what is happening in the substitution reaction. In this reaction, one of the atom is removed and another atom or group of atom takes the place of that removed atom and this is called substitution reaction. So what is substitution reaction? When in a reaction an atom or group of atom is replaced by the other atom or group of atom, the reaction is known as substitution reaction. Here we are talking about the substitution reaction. And the, here, just because we are substituting it with the chlorine, the reaction is also known as chlorination reaction. This special reaction takes place in the presence of sunlight and this is represented by H nu or you can write it as photons also. In the presence of sunlight, chlorine replaces the hydrogen from the methane and this particular reaction continues itself this particular reaction continues itself till all the hydrogen are removed, are replaced by the chlorine atom one by one. Let us see what happens when the another atom is, another atom of the hydrogen will be replaced. I am adding to it, I am removing one HCl and I am adding Cl2 in the presence of H nu. So what, it will, be, what will be formed now? CH2. Now this time I am removing this one, so the Cl will be added to it and this Cl was already there. Now I am going to remove again another H and this time this H I am taking and I am adding Cl2 in the presence of H nu and what we are getting here is C, Cl, Cl and this H which is replaced by the Cl and this is H. Another time we can go for it. One more H which is left out will be removed and addition of Cl2 in the presence of H nu will give you CCl4. So all of you can see that one by one all the hydrogen are replacing 1, 2, 3 and 4. All the hydrogen are replaced by the chlorine atom in the presence of sunlight or diffuse sunlight and this reaction uh, where the atom is replaced by the another atom is known as substitution reaction and you can also confirm it that this reaction is given by the saturated hydrocarbon obviously. On the other hand side the products form are very important and that is monochloromethane, this is dichloromethane, this is trichloromethane methane which is also called as chloroform and this last but not the least this is tetrachloro okay, okay students let's start with the, another kind of reaction called addition reaction this is very simple reaction as the name is suggesting here in these kind of reaction we are going to add some molecule atoms to the molecule but for the addition, we need to have a scope of the addition. As we have already discussed at the time of substitution reaction, I have shown you the example that is, if there is methane and the valency of the carbon is 4 and all the valency of the carbon are satisfied with the hydrogen. So, if I want to add something to this carbon, whether it is possible for me or not? Obviously not, just because this is having their valencies completed. So, these kind of addition reactions are not given by the saturated hydrocarbon. They undergo substitution reaction. And these 
another kind of hydrocarbons which we are very familiar with this is alkenes alkenes are double bonded and the other kind of unsaturated hydrocarbon that is alkynes that having double bond and having triple bond in them if i want to add something to it that is if i want to add hydrogen to it so definitely they will like to undergo the addition reaction because they are not satisfied one carbon is added to the three of the other kind of atoms and it has the scope to add more because the valency of the carbon is four so what will happen in case of the alkene this hydrogen will be added to the double bond by breaking down of the double one bond of the double bond or the sig pi bond of the double bond so this is what happening here one bond will be broken down creating the two valencies other hydrogen will remain same here and this hydrogen as an atom will be added to the more valencies created valencies but this reaction takes place in the presence of certain catalyst called nickel platinum or palladium in the same manner this triple bond will also undergo the addition reaction by breaking down the first pi bond and the second pi bond given in the, given in the structure so let us break down the bond one by one and let us add the hydrogen one by one to the molecule step by step this reaction can be written as if i add one more one hydrogen atom to it molecule to it in the presence of nickel or platinum or palladium the first one will be broken down creating the two valencies here that is like ch2 creating one valencies here this hydrogen will be added to it in the next step in the presence of nickel and on passing the hydrogen one another bond second bond will be broken down creating the valencies over there another hydrogen will remain same and this hydrogen this new hydrogen will be added to the valence valency which was created by the breaking of the next pi bond so we can define the addition reaction as the reaction in which the atom or group of atom is added to the double bond or triple bond to form the saturated compounds and this is special reaction in which we are adding the hydrogen to the double bond or triple bond is known as hydrogenation reaction this particular reaction takes place in the presence of nickel platinum and palladium this hydrogenation reaction is very important for the industrial purpose also that is it converts the vegetable oil into the vanaspati ghee let us see how here in this particular reaction vegetable oil which are containing double bond in them or triple bond in them are added to the hydrogen in the presence of nickel palladium and platinum which converts them into the vanaspati ghee which are saturated compounds this vanaspati ghee is not good for the health whereas vegetable oil is good for the health so vegetable oil can be easily converted into the vanaspati ghee by adding hydrogen to it in the presence of nickel platinum and palladium this is all about hydrogenation reaction a type of addition reaction so i hope we have covered all the type of reactions given by the organic compound and it will be helpful for you for the examination purpose thank you